What's going on everyone? My name is Triforce Addiction. Welcome back to another COD Mobile video. So today I want to kind of reflect on the weapon balance for this game and kind of compare it to what is currently on right now in console Call of Duty, such as Modern Warfare, Warzone, Black Ops, Cold War, and Vanguard. So why am I making this video? It's because there was a specific comment yesterday, or I guess earlier today when I made the video of the PDW versus the CBR4, and someone had said that we're at a point in time where all of the older weapons that were released day one or around that time has been obsolete with the new weapons that have been released today, such as the M13, MX9, CBR4, and so on. It really resonated with me because as much as I hate to admit it, I mean, it's the truth. And I always want to use off meta weapons. You guys saw me last live stream. I was trying to use the ICR against an MX9 and that wasn't even possible. Um, you know, most weapons now compared to those are now obsolete. There's no way you can really win a lot of matches with those unless you're like in a lobby full of like not non really skilled people, I guess. But still, I mean, the weapons today. Is, yeah, you guys understand where I'm coming from, but it kind of makes it kind of comes into question whether or not we need to upgrade it or like a, some sort of improvement to the gunsmith system because as of right now it kind of feels updated and it would be kind of nice to have something around vanguard and i don't mean you know the fire bullets or anything like that that, that doesn't have to be in the game but you know different attachments to help the older weapons get some sort of advantage maybe something that can increase the fire rate or decrease it but give it higher damage stuff like that that could help improve the other guns that are not used so often in this game there could be other changes such as you know decreasing penalties for certain barrels and this goes specifically to the ak-47 because i feel like this one actually suffers the most when it comes to attachment penalties if you guys know if you guys use the marksman barrel you know that it takes about 25 percent ADS speed. That's more than a lot of weapons in this game. And honestly, I feel like that's not really that fair. And to be honest, with uh, the Ranger Barrel, it actually gives it more range, but it kind of... It, it, it gives you like less of a downside when it comes to ADS speed for whatever reason. But yeah, it, it, I don't know. The Gunsmith is still kind of weird for some weapons, but it does need to change because at the current moment, I mean... Not a lot of weapons are being used, and for the most part, the only weapons that are being used are the ones that are, you know, more recent. And I feel like changes like that, you know, having faster fire rates or lower fire rates, you know, stuff like that to help the weapon can go a long way, especially for weapons like the PDW, the Shecom, and others. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what I mean. If you guys played Modern Warfare because that was actually where the gunsmith actually came out first, you guys would know that most of the attachments that were in that game were more th more downsides than anything. And that's some that's a reason why I didn't want to play Modern Warfare because I couldn't have any speed towards my assault rifles with adding so much recoil, right? Like there was just so many different downsides that just kind of turned me off. I couldn't kill from a long range or a medium range if I had no stock. Um, you know, you get freaking ADS movement penalties for just having a red dot sight apparently adds the amount of weight of a cinder block to your weapon it's it was it was crazy that's kind of like why i did not play modern warfare but cold war was a little bit different because there were less downsides the only time there was an actual downside was if it was going to decrease the hit fire accuracy or something like that and there was also task force barrels that do increase the ads speed but give it a little bit more power alongside recoil penalties see and those were the only times that it actually had any sort of downside and for the most part if you had like some sort of quick draw handle there was no there was no detriment to your weapon for doing so and that's why I really liked about Black Ops Cold War and, you know, Vanguard is kind of doing the same thing. They do have downsides on some attachments, but of course it's not as bad as Modern Warfare. And currently right now what we have is the Modern Warfare style of the gunsmith, which includes having most attachments have some sort of downside. And there were some changes that were made to certain gunsmith attachments. Uh, the one that I hated the most that they changed for literally no reason was the strike foregrip. Um, I know a lot of you guys probably remember the strike foregrip didn't really have huge downsides. Um, it had a lot of ADS bullet spread upsides at the time, but then they added this penalty where you get your ADS movement speed reduced down to 15%. And of course, not a lot of people 
really resonated well with that change because I mean it, it, it was so unnecessary and it, it wasn't needed and like I said earlier some of the attachment benefits and downsides are very very inconsistent you know for example the Holger if you use a no stock on that it's 40% ADS movement speed but that doesn't apply to all of the other LMGs right it gives you like maybe a 10% a 15 at max so yeah, they don't give you a, like the same benefits as it does for some weapons. Another good example would be the AK-47. Like I said, the barrels, some of them are ex insanely, uh, I guess, costly for your weapon. I mean, the marksman barrel is what, 27, 25% ADS speed? While like for the most part, some of them can be just 15%, 16%, 12% ADS movement speed for other weapons. You know, you can't have that if it's, it, it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't seem perfectly balanced in some ways. I mean, I mean, the huge suppressor for the Man of War, I mean, at 22% ADS speed, I mean, come on. That's, that's, that's kind of ridiculous, especially for a weapon like that, that doesn't, that no longer provides any sort of vertical recoil benefits. I mean, it, if it had that, okay, maybe fine, it would be all right, but at least reduce the penalty down to like, maybe, I don't know, like, 15% or something I think that would be a little bit more fitting you know there, there are attachments that we could be using right now that just that we can't because it just becomes too much of a detriment to our weapons another inconsistent attachment that kind of messes with some guns the wrong way would probably be would probably be the steady stock slash strike stock so you guys know the steady stock or strike stock whatever you want to call it does reduce ADS movement speed but it does give you an ADS bullet spread benefit um, of course, that's that's a pretty cool feature. I mean, that's something I would use a lot for the KN44 when it needed it the most. I mean, it also does provide horizontal recoil control. But for SMGs, it seems to apply differently because, you know, there are some that don't really have any downsides, such as the, the RUS-79U or maybe the QXR. I th well, actually, the, I think the QXR does have both ADS and ADS movement speed penalties. But, you know, the AGR, the GKS, the HG40 all have that weird type of downside. I don't understand why those downsides have to be more strict on those weapons when it doesn't have to be on most others. I mean, think about it. The M13 by far outguns most of the weaponry in this game. And even if you use the steady stock or I guess the strike stock, whatever it's called, it doesn't provide the same downsides as it would if you're using a GKS. Like, how, how does that make sense? The point is that there shouldn't be that strict penalties for weapons that don't need to have it, like the GKS or the AGR. Um, you know, if you want to use Steady Stock, of course, Steady Stock is one of the main attachments I use to reduce the horizontal recoil. And the AGR and GKS have a lot of that. But unfortunately, you need to put Strike Stock in order to alleviate most of it, which is a huge downside to your weapon because it does reduce your ADS movement speed as well as ADS speed by like 12 to 15%. And like I said, that's something that most weapons don't have. This was also added for the FR556. Um, the one thing that made the weapon good was steady stock. If you did use that, you were able to alleviate pretty much all of the horizontal recoil. But then they added that downside where now it's 6% ADS speed as well as like 15% ADS movement speed. The reason why I'm pointing this out is because of the, these attachment issues. And that's kind of why the MX-9 and the M13 is currently doing so well. Um, they don't, like their attachments don't have really much of, like of any penalties really. I mean, if you think about it, the 40 round double stack mag gives you a silencer, 20% extra range and faster reloading speed with the cost of maybe like 8% ADS speed. I mean, all those benefits with just such a little downside. And yes, of course, there, I mean, you do get the other downside of, you know, having less bullets, like the 60 round mag. But I mean, with having a range increase like that with literally no, <laughs> with no penalty. I mean, think about it. The, the monolithic suppressor gives you a 12% ADS decrease. But if you use that one attachment, it just basically makes the monolithic suppressor obsolete because, I mean, that mag, for some reason, I don't even know how it makes sense, it gives you a built-in silencer. <laughs> I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. And I think the MX-9, oh my god, that one's even worse. I mean, you put large caliber on that weapon, there is no downside at all. 
If you put hybrid mag on that weapon and yet it's like an eight percent ADS speed, I mean, what's that going to do to an already increasingly fast weapon? I mean, this this the sturdy grip tape or whatever it's called, the firm grip tape, I think, gives you a twenty five ADS speed boost. And what does the stippled grip tape do for the other weapons? It decreases their recoil control and it reduces their ADS bullet spread accuracy. From what I know, the Peacekeeper and the Hades has this Black Ops Cold War style of gunsmith. Um, yeah, like most of the attachments do have some sort of penalties. I mean, for an LMG like the Hades, I mean, yeah, it's still pretty slow even after all the speed attachments. But still, I mean, there's not a lot of downsides. I mean, even with the Peacekeeper, I think the only attachment that has like any major downsides, it's the long barrel or the task force barrel. And that's pretty much it. If you use like a uh, well forged barrel that gives you a 50% range boost, there's you get no penalty for that. What happened? Dude, it, if that was on any other weapon, that would have been like a fucking 40% ADS reduction probably even worse to be honest, but yeah, I mean they had their own reasonable downsides a peacekeeper with the task force barrel It does decrease your vertical recoil control as well as horizontal But I mean yeah, you have to use attachments that would slow down your ADS movement speed at least and Yeah, like they balanced it that way, but there was no There was no balancing when it came to the MX-9 at the time. I mean now it has a horizontal recoil but yeah, I mean the, really the only Thing that you have to do to alleviate that issue is just put a field agent foregrip and that's it and i mean i was doing that anyways so <laughs> it, it's not really much of a change for me but i know they reduced the range and all but i mean if you think about it sorry that's my keyboard but if you think about it i mean those weapons have much higher damage much higher fire rates than most others i mean if you think about it the icr has like what a 24 i mean 24 damage on the body right but like with a very slow firing rate. I mean, if you compare that to the MX-9, which has the same amount of damage, I mean, you're obviously gonna lose every single time, unless you're like at a really long range. I mean, that's what has that's what the ICR has over the M13. I mean, it could kill from a pretty good range, but then again, it still has a lot of recoil, so you would have to put a marksman or a monolithic suppressor to even maintain that range. And yeah, the downside is you're gonna be extremely slow. And that's something that the M13 does not have. Look, if there was some sort of gunsmith change that would happen in this game to help all the other weapons, I mean, that would be really nice. I mean, that's actually kind of what we need right now. We need an overhaul. We need something that won't, you know, make every attachment a huge downside. I mean, if you remove the negative effects, I mean, it, for the Kilo, I mean, that, that was honestly a stupid change. I mean, for Season 11, when the Kilo got buffed, it wasn't really much of a buff. Because they only increased the ADS speed by like maybe 20, uh, 20 milliseconds, or I guess they decreased it by 20 milliseconds. Dude, that is not enough to help the weapon at all. Especially that you, you need stopping power for that weapon, and the downside is so fucking high that it's not even worth using. So you have to stick to either the fast reload or just no attachment at all, because you're just going to be too slow to react. You know, downsides like these just don't need to be on weapons like that. I mean, you could reduce the downside maybe down to 5%, but, like, why 10%? And what pissed me off about this other, like, this ghost update that they did to certain weapons, like the the QQ9, they nerfed its range so badly to the point where it's almost now a six-shot kill. Like, what? who asked for that, you know? Like, they're making all these changes, or they're handicapping all these guns to the point where only the newer ones are going to be most viable. And that can happen. You added these guns into this game for a reason. And, you know, I wanted to I want to use all these guns. I want to use the GKS. I want to use the PDW. But not if it means that I'm going to lose every single game because a person has a better weapon than I do. I mean, it, it, it's not fair. And look, I'm not going to act like Vanguard, Cold War, or even Modern Warfare has their own doesn't have their own meta. Of course they do. They had the MP5, M4, uh, Cold War had the AK-47, the AK-74U, MP5. You know, they had all that stuff, but at the same time, you were able to use other weapons to combat those. Here, I think the meta is at its worst. Well, as of right now, it's fine. But, you know, when we do have, like, you know, very toxic metas, I feel like it's the worst here. Because it's not just one person using a meta weapon every match. It's every single one of them. And yeah, that's where the problem lies. I feel like in terms of meta, this game has to be the worst I think I've ever seen. And I know, you know, Infinite Warfare was pretty bad. Um, Modern Warfare was fucking even worse. 
but I feel like this one kind of tops everything because this game literally forces you to use that weapon in order to actually succeed in a match. Unlike, you know, Cold War Vanguard, you could use a bunch of different weapons and make them viable in, in their own ways. Here, we don't have that option because there's just so many downsides with attachments. There's no, there's nothing that could really help these weapons instead of just giving them a range boost. Like, you know, having rapid fire on some weapons would be really nice. You know, having it on the PDW or having, you know, like some sort of thing that slows down the fire rate but makes it even more powerful. We need stuff like that. And without it, all the older weapons are just going to suffer. Black Ops 3 is a perfect example of having rapid fire. They had rapid fire for literally every single weapon. Um, that included SMGs, LMGs, and even assault rifles. And it helped all the weapons immensely because every single weapon had a chance. Here, we don't have that. I mean, yeah, some of them have rapid fire. Some of them have enhanced bolts. But, you know, they nerfed them so bad to the point where now they have, like, their own specific downsides. I mean, the QXR, all they had to do was just re was just to reduce the range. And that's it. That's all they had to do. But instead, they added, like, this recoil downside as well as pretty much taking away all the damage multipliers. And now, like, now it, that weapon's doesn't really have much of a chance anymore. I know it's, some people still use it and I respect them for that, but you know, it's not gonna be able to, to compete against like a Fennec or even an MX-9 or an M13. But anyways, I'm just, I'm done talking about this. I mean, like I said, I, I feel like we need some sort of adjustment to the gunsmith or just the weapons in, themselves. Um, because as of right now, all the older weapons are kind of suffering and it kind of sucks that you kind of, you have to stick to the newer weapons in order to even succeed, like the M M13, MX-9. Um, of course, I mean, the Fennec is doing pretty well. It's kind of holding off all, like a lot of other weapons. The GKS is doing fine, but, you know, they could do a little bit more in situations like these where in some matches you just feel extremely powerless. But anyways, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Hope you guys leave a like. Make sure to subscribe. Also, let me know in the comment section what you think should happen to these guns in the future. I mean, we're about to get a, another major update pretty soon. Um, I think the Chinese COD Mobile is going to get it first. And from there, we can know what the features are, what the changes are going to be. And hopefully, man, hopefully this is the year that we get some sort of animated camo for completionists. Um, especially for, you know, getting all diamond. Still waiting on that, Timmy Studio, so... Get on that. But anyways, have a wonderful day, guys.